Hey, it's Friday, and I am so stoked today. I'm out here at the gun range. Today, after waiting for three months, is finally my AR class. I'm taking the class from a guy named John McPhee. I've read about him online before I signed up. They talk about, in the reviews, what a great person he is, what an amazing class this is as well. Most of the reviews talk about it being a complete game changer for you. Ultimately, what he does is he films you, he looks at grip and stance and presentation, and the angle of your gun, your timing, and he's gonna work on getting all those small little mistakes you have fixed, and when you leave here, you're supposed to be a better shooter, and that's my goal, I hope, is that I come out with the fundamentals, not only to fix any kind of rifle issues I'm having, but across any platform at all. So, I got both rifles, I brought them just in case one should go down, they shouldn't, but you wanna be sure, and 400 rounds of ammunition, eight hours out here, it's gonna be a lot of fun, I'm told there's only actually 10 people who show up to these classes. He keeps them small, so he has that one-on-one -on -one time. It's gonna be a great day, I can't wait. So I'll jump out, open the gate to the gun range, and if I get a chance, I'll make sure to post some kind of video as well in here of time spent that day. I just don't know whether or not he really wants any of his footage shown because I know it's his business. Um, but if he doesn't mind, I'll throw some in, and then at the end, I'll check back in with you as I leave. Hey, see you later. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. Stance, let's watch. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. Stance, only thing that matters is head is over or in front of your lead foot. And I think your lead foot's somewhere about right there. Okay, so the true test is if you get pushed backwards. And you're a pretty good big guy, so you shouldn't be getting pushed at all. So, let's see what we see. Kind of get pushed a little bit, watch. See that? Watch your earplugs. Kind of get pushed about an inch overall. And, and what's going to help is uh, a list of best practices for you. Okay, first thing I want you to do is I want you to forcibly push your knees over the balls of your feet. It's going to prevent you from putting your hips backwards and it's going to put your weight forward. Basically the way I'm sitting now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Shoulders in front of the hips. Right? And then head in front of the shoulders. And then overall, that'll take you to your, your lead toe. Okay. Make sense? It does. Okay. Okay, next thing I see is you're bringing your head down to the gun to the side, right? And what I want to show you is if I mark a line on your face, you're bringing your head down and to the right to see your sights. I want you to bring your head forward like you're trying to touch your nose to the charging handle. I don't want you to touch your nose to your charging handle, but I want you to stick your head forward, right? Because there's two ways to get your head behind the sight down and sideways this is kind of what you're doing to see the sight okay. right and forward and as you bring the head forward you can bring the sight to your eye so no more of this stuff no more of that right. more of this yep okay. head forward and that'll help you get your head behind the sight the next thing is is your gun is a little bit low a little bit low right like so watch If, if watch how you drive your head down to the gun okay. right if you brought your head up your gun up to your eye what you'd have to do is this the rifle would have to be here right the scope would be somewhere right here so I'm putting the, the stock too low too low you saying. need to move the stock up. up so when your your pivot happens right when this pivot happens mm -hmm. the gun comes up to your eye So bring the gun that up, bring your gun up in your shoulder just a little bit, right? And that'll keep you from having to bring your head down to the gun. Because what happens is the gun's so low now, like, well, let me undo a couple of these, let me clean it up. The gun's so low now, look, see where your eyes are on the green line? Mm -hmm. If you didn't move your head and you brought your gun up, you never went up to the green line. You know what I mean? So essentially you'd have done this, the scope would still be right here. 
Make sense? It does. Um, any questions with stance? No. Grip. Looks like I need to tighten up. Yeah, so, okay, firing arm, right? Firing arm, angle's good, looks pretty good. Okay, shoulder. I want you to push the shoulder. Your shoulder looks like it's up, like you're bringing it up high. That's good. But what I want you to do is as you bring it up high, I want you to Drive push it, it. forward. Right. So you're pulling your firing hand back and driving your shoulder forward. And that's going to lock the gun to your body. Okay. okay. So let me mark the, the sight. Right. And watch, watch your hand and gun move back when it goes off. See that? Okay. What I want you to do is watch. So the gun goes off. See how it pushes back into your shoulder just a little bit? I want you to pull back and start with your hand there. Okay. Because then if the gun is tight to the body, where is it going to go? Nowhere. Nowhere, right? Meaning the crosshair is going to be on the target longer through the whole time you shoot, meaning you could shoot faster and more accurate. Okay. Make sense? It does. Okay. Non-firing hand. Non-firing hand looks pretty good. Um, it's a little overextended, right? So I would say bring the shoulder closer to the lower. Hold around and just change it a little bit a little bit more of a 90 degree angle yes okay. your hand doesn't change right the hand doesn't change where it is like it watch drops the elbow. if 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 i'm if my arm is straight my shoulders are square watch my hand won't move and watch right a little bit better angle that's going to give you a little more strength to hold to the end of the gun longer and a little more stable okay let's watch your grip See how your fingers move when the gun goes off a little bit? Mm -hmm. Little more grip of the non-firing hand, okay. right? Hold the gun a little bit tighter with the non-firing hand. And then look how your, your non-firing hand, again, also gets pushed backwards when you shoot, right? Is pull that thing tight before the gun goes off. Okay. So just firm everything up, basically. Yep. And you're tightening the gun to your body before it goes off. Okay. And you're taking all that play out. Because if there's no play in the gun, when the gun goes off, guess where the sights go? They stay in the same place. And if the gun is tight, what will happen is, if the gun is tight to your body, what will happen is, your gun will recoil straight back and straight forward. Because the gun is actually true. The action is true. So no more of this stuff. Yeah. That won't happen anymore. Because I know my follow-up shots are always really poor. Yeah. All that stuff will start to go away. Okay. Make sense? It does. Thank you. Any questions? Not on this. Presentation. Okay. Okay. Gun comes up. Full presentation. Right? Remember, 30-degree angle today for training. All right. No issues. Right, probably lower than 30 degrees. Bring the gun up. We're at full presentation and timer. Let's see what happens. A little bit up over. And look, the gun's at full presentation, and now you're starting to aim the gun. Look, you're starting to aim. Right? And, yeah. and as you're aiming, look, your head comes down. Watch the gun as you're driving your gun, your head down, the gun comes down gun goes off four tenths of a second it takes you to aim get the dot on the target and shoot that's because I'm not bringing the gun up initially right had you brought the gun to your eye this should be zero because look where the gun is right now right and look where the gun was at zero it's in the same place yeah. matter of fact with you look the gun never moves off that green line I put on there so that tells me at any time you could have shot and you still would have had a kill shot. Still would have been a good shot. However, you weren't ready to aim the gun because your eye wasn't behind the scope. Right? So prep the head ahead of time. Bring the gun to the eye. As soon as the gun comes up, you got the scope on. Bang. Okay. Take that shot. We'll get rid of that four tenths of a second. And look, if we get rid of that four tenths of a second, right, watch. As I rewind the film, let's go to zero. Right? Now look how long it takes you to drive the gun up. You could shoot at three tenths of a second. And you're not trying to go fast, you're just bringing the gun up and shooting. 
right? As of right now, if you add three tenths till the gun goes off at four something, you're looking at three quarters of a second. People still say that's a fast shot when the truth is you're, you're wiggling the gun for more time than it actually takes you to get it to where you could shoot a kill shot. Clearly, like you said, the vendor doesn't lie. Yep. So um, we're going to get rid of that four tenths today. Any questions of presentation? Yes, sir. Reload. Okay. Drop the gun immediately. You start to wiggle it a little bit. Yeah. Remember, keep that sucker pointed at the ground. Get rid of it as soon as possible. Right. The more the magwell's aimed at the ground, the quicker that thing's going to fall away. The quicker you can do business. Right. And it won't never hang up. So you get rid of it. Now you leave your, your buttstock in your shoulder, right? You leave it mounted. This is the hardest way to hold the gun, Okay. right? Remember, tuck that sucker under your armpit and instead of the gun being here, the gun should be here, just under your line of sight right. and under your armpit, right? Bring the hand to the body, palm up. And what that does is it puts the magwell right here. So as you come out with your magazine, you're right in. It's the shortest distance. It's the easiest way to get the magazine in. Make sense? It does. So mag comes out, and you're kind of already doing this. Mag comes out, kind of fumble just a little bit with it. I missed, yeah. And that's because you're trying to come up into it. If, if the gun, you were palm up, the gun was on its side, you could pull that magazine out and go straight in. It's the easiest, quickest way to get the magazine in. Okay, you get the magazine in, you slap it. No need to slap it, right? Um, paratroopers, I've trained a bunch of paratroopers, and they do, they like to call it the tap tug. So what I do is I tap the magazine in, and I give it a little pull down. If it pulls out, it didn't lock. If I push it in, and I pull, and it doesn't come, then I go out to grip, okay. right? That. The extra slap is kind of not necessary, and generally, most guys, when they seat a magazine on a rifle, it's seated, right. right? Unless it's a Magpul mag, it's got 31 rounds in it, then it'll never lock. Okay, so you go in, right, when you seat the mag, and let me clear it, maybe we can, no, uh, I can't see the controls of your gun to see when it locks, but I can tell you this, it's probably locked in there right now, the extra tap. Wasn't necessary. Wasn't necessary. Slide lock. And then you kind of mess with your sling a little bit. Remember, just bring that hand from here to there. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Don't worry about the sling. You kind of you come around outside the sling. If if the sling is something you're messing with a lot, what I would tell you is mount it somewhere right there. I don't use a sling a lot. So that's probably part of the reason. We'll watch it today. You may not have trouble the rest of the day. Not really that big a deal, right? So um, back out to grip to shoot. Now let's watch your eyes, right? Take your shots. You're still looking at the target. Now you look, watch. You look down here. This is a touch early, right? Here's when you should look down. There. So a little bit early. Try to not look down until you feel that mag getting close and look down. A little bit early. Mag goes in, eyes are back up on target. Perfect timing with your eyes. Um, any questions with the reload? No. Actually, with 
my nice green can. I'm good. I'm the sexiest guy in the world. So they eventually put the can in the just so you can do that. Alright. Alright, you ready? Jack, get ready to shoot. Aim at the target. Okay, where do you want me to shoot at? Alright, wait. Let's shoot a new guy. Alright. says lean forward because I got pushed I'm back. I'm overcompensating. Yes, so you're doing the wrong. That's what opens the group up to. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah, it does. The next yeah. thing is look. This angle right here. You see, you see this angle? Yeah. This angle. yeah. It's not completely vertical. It's a little bit of grip. So probably about grip on the gun tight to the body. Right. When the gun's loose from the body, you'll start to see yeah. this angle manifest through the group. Okay. Right? And then you can see it on other groups. Look at this one. See how this one's really pronounced this yeah. way? Right? A little yeah. bit this way. Right? We can start to see that through the group. That's grip. That's loose grip. So you're probably 90, 95% answer on grip. The stance we need to work on. And once you shrink down the stance, look, you shrink down the stance, look, your group's going to be that big for as fast as you can shoot it. Okay. I'll work on that. Okay. Thank you. Good job. None of my, my hands, nothing changes. I'm actually turning to the I'm turning to the Ah, there you go. Hands, arms, everything's tight. Right? The only thing that's turning is your upper body. You ready? Load it up. So you know what to do, right? Yep. Look. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Pick up the pace. Yeah. Yeah, keep doing that. Reload. Tuck it under your arm. There you go. Good. Good. Start out slow. Pick up the pace. No, it's the same bullet. That's my issue. I think yeah. I think you're right. Bring it in match. Got my over here. There you go. All right. Wow. What a great day. That was so awesome. I am tired. I'm worn out. I'm hot and dusty and sweaty. But I am so thankful I took that class. John McPhee is an amazing individual. Every one of those reviews I read about him. They're 100% correct. 
You spent a lot of time with us on an individual less level. Talked about us, all the things we're doing. Checked with us constantly. I am a better shooter now today by far than I was when I went there this morning. I know that. I've learned the small things I need to fix. I learned the big things I need to work on. Man, I am so glad I took that class. It was awesome. There was only 10 shooters, and I was one of only two guys who are actually from Pokey. The rest of the group, the other eight, they all came down from Oregon. Thankful I got that class. If you're at all wondering about taking a class, ah, uh, yuck. From this guy, jump on it. Look up sobtactical.com, read about him. He's amazing. It was worth every second, worth every penny. And if he comes back here again next year, I'm going to jump on another class, try to take the pistol one. If not, get the two-day carbine in. I have learned a bunch, and I am so thankful for every moment he spent with me and everybody out there. It was a great learning experience. I'm a better shooter today. My groups are tighter. I know what I need to work on. It was awesome. Go home, take a shower, get some dinner. Man, I'm tired though. It was worth it. Look them up. Until next time, we'll see you. I know, this whole episode was only about me. It just kind of made sense to keep all this stuff together as one standalone video. Hey, if any of you guys have ever taken one of John's classes before, please leave a comment below. Tell us what you liked about the class or what your big takeaway was. If you've ever had a class from another instructor and you would recommend him, let us know that as well. If you know someone who's looking to take a class or could just use a training class, then please share this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.